Oh, look, the lights are on at Central. Staff and volunteers are busy getting things ready for the reopening on the first Sunday of Lent. That's right, on Sunday, March 6, the church doors will be open wide for our traditional morning worship at 1030. As you once again cross the threshold of the entranceway, you will be greeted in front of our stained glass windows. We are reminded of the days when our Sunday school program was bursting at the seams. We had 581 children registered in 1931. These many years later, Central, now a downtown church, still has a vibrant children's ministry. Children are welcome to return on March 6th. However, the Sunday school classes will not resume until March 27th. And then there is the depiction of the story of Mary and Martha. Here at Central, we truly believe in the values of hospitality and service. After all, we are the church in the heart of the city, with the city in our hearts. Finally, the third stained glass window reminds us that at the center of our faith is Christ. We think of his law of unconditional love and his gospel of peace. And now, by the grace of God, we can once again gather in his name in our beautiful and historic sanctuary. With COVID-19 protocols in place, our greeters will assist your arrival by offering complimentary masks, should you not have one, and hand sanitizer. And then an usher will guide you into the sanctuary where we ask that you respect the health of others by maintaining social distancing and by not congregating. And so we eagerly look forward to seeing everyone back in the pews on the first Sunday of Lent, March the 6th, as we look towards new beginnings here in the heart of our city.
When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. Jesus was that kind of light. Jesus saw the light and Jesus was the light. Today, as we begin our Lenten journey, we will hold the Christ light before us to fill the darkness with courage and hope. God calls us each and every day. God calls us through the tears of sadness. God calls through the tears of joy. God calls. How we acknowledge it is up to us. Our choice to worship on this winter evening is one of those ways we accept God's call. Welcome to this hushed and sacred holy time. Now please join me in prayer. Gentle spirit, we have come through the growing excitement and light of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany. Now we turn ourselves inward. Now we shine the light of Jesus into our hearts to renew and strengthen our faith for the difficult journey that awaits. Bless this time of reflection and guide our steps as we journey the Lenten road that leads through death to life. Amen. Thank you. 
Today's reading is from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 to 12 in the New Revised Standard Version. False and true worship. Shut out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me for righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? a day to humble oneself. It is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is it not this, the fast that I choose? To loose the bounds of injustice and to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you seek the naked to cover them and not hide them from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like watered gardens, like a spring of water whose water never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All during the season of Epiphany, we have been hearing the stories of Jesus as he's traveled around the countryside, preaching, teaching, healing, and transforming people's lives. And now we've come to the season we call Lent. It is that season in which we turn our heads and our hearts and our steps to travel with Jesus to Jerusalem, where he will meet his ultimate fate there in that city, the seat of power, both with the Romans and with the Jewish leaders. And so as we prepare to be a part of that, we are reminded of many of the words of Jesus. The last shall be first, the first shall be last. You are to take care of one or one another, love God, love neighbor. These are the kind of words he's shared with the people around him. But so much of what he shared came from his time in reading scripture, his scripture, which is the Hebrew scriptures or the Old Testament, as we often call it. And I am sure in my heart that the words of Isaiah resonated particularly in his heart. Isaiah, an ancient prophet of Israel, 
who preached to the people during the exile and gave them hope that they would move from exile into a new way of being. And Jesus, in his own way, taught people that they would be moving from an exile of the heart into a new way of being in the world. And so we've chosen for our time together this evening this beautiful passage from Isaiah, Isaiah 58, verses 1 to 12. It's a clarion call for us in the 21st century about how we are to live. And it spoke to Jesus about how he should live and how he lived out his ministry. Let me just read a few sentences for you. Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of un injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. This is the clarion call that Isaiah offered to his people and that Jesus in his time offers to us. And as you know, these kinds of words, especially that whole thing about justice seeking, would upset some of the people in power around him. And it was not very long before he was put on trial and was crucified and executed by the state. As we journey with Jesus during this six-week season of Lent, we are asked to think about our life here now and how we receive the clarion call from Jesus, the words of Isaiah coming through Jesus to us. How will we be in terms of feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, challenging injustice. This is the call for us during this Lenten season. My prayer for each one of us as we journey with Jesus, as we take each measured, measured step, that our hearts will be opened more fully to the words of Jesus who called on us to be fully human, and fully alive, and fully aware of the people around us and pour out compassion and love on the world. One of the rituals of Ash Wednesday is to take the ashes from the palm leaves that were burnt from the previous year and to imposition them on our foreheads in the sign of a cross. We do this to remind us of how Jesus began with palm branches shouting out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And within a week, he would be hanging on a cross. And we are filled with penitence and sadness of how we can move from a frenzied mob and to, into a more frenzied mob who asks for death. So I'd like to invite Colleen, my beloved colleague, and the one who has recorded so much and so many of our services for us to share this sacred and holy moment. I hope you will take a moment at home. Uh, we've sent out to you the uh, tattoo crosses that can be imprinted on your forehead. We invite you to take a time in your own time to do that and to open your heart to all that will await us in the journey ahead. Colleen. I mark on your forehead the sign of the cross of Jesus Christ. May we journey together as companions on this journey. May we never abandon Jesus. And in spite of the mobs around us, may we remain steadfast and faithful even as Jesus did.
you go forth, my beloveds, God's beloveds. May you go forth wearing the cross of Jesus Christ on your forehead to be reminded of his ministry and his sacrifice and his outpouring of love for us. May we journey together in this Lenten season. Amen. As we enter into this season of Lent, may we know that God is always with us, that Jesus Christ is leading the way, and that the Holy Spirit will give us strength for the journey. Go in peace. Amen.